Thank you for your continued support of this series, Why I Think Curse of Strahd is So Good. Before we continue, you should know this contains spoilers. Although we won't be going into every minute detail of every location or gameplay element, it is important to be warned. Secondly, Curse of Strahd, even though written for a game that children play, due to the nature of the setting and the moral ambiguity of what's right and wrong in such a wretched place, viewer discretion is advised. A villain with a tragic backstory trapped in a land of his own making, filled with dread, hate, and danger everywhere you go. This is part two of the mini-series about why I believe Curse of Strahd is so good. Get your Radiant spells ready, as we will be discussing unique gameplay and world building that makes Barovia so well remembered and feared. The start of an adventure can make a lasting impression on the players. Curse of Strahd has multiple adventure hooks that can pull the PCs into Barovia without them knowing. Before any more is said, please understand that some of this is opinionated. And if you've listened to Matt and I's Halloween gaming podcast or our first video on how to run a horror game, you'll know that I firmly believe that the setting of the proper tone is crucial to make Curse of Strahd run well from the beginning. There are four provided adventure hooks out of the box. Stay tuned for the video in the series where we talk about homebrew and the options that those provide. Personally, I believe it's best to not necessarily let your players know that they are playing Curse of Strahd. But I understand that it's not always the easiest to do, nor with some groups is it advisable, but it'll be your call. The first out-of-the-box adventure hook is called A Plea for Help. It has vibes of the original Ravenloft adventure hooks where a gypsy, although I will be using the more politically correct name Vistani, comes into a tavern where the PCs are spending some time. The box text is great here to set the mood. A short quote, Outside the tavern, a fog lies over the town this evening. The damp, cobbled pavement glistens as the lights of street lanterns dance across the slick stones. While the PCs are lively and having fun role-playing, a mysterious man comes in the door. The PCs don't know he's a Fastani, but he comes in with a letter from Burgomaster Koylan Indirovich, who is requesting the PCs' help in the land of Barovia, a land that none of the PCs have heard of. He gives them the physical letter, which I suggest giving them the prop for, and tells them how to get to Barovia, but suggests not traveling at night. He buys a round of drinks for everyone in the tavern, and at the next morning, the PCs follow his directions, and they are swallowed by the fog. The second adventure hook is the Mysterious Visitors. This is a great way to fake out your players. Out of the box, this is my favorite vanilla adventure hook for Curse of Strahd. It starts with a local duke or duchess calling the PCs in for sort of a dinner party? This book uses Daggerford, but it doesn't really matter, and if you wish to start your players at level 1, doing work beforehand to gain the trust of this benefactor and local leader is actually very well advised. The Duchess looks sad or slightly frustrated, and if the PCs press, she says a group of strange visitors has set up camp outside the town. They threaten to curse those who don't give them money, and by the way, these are the Vistani. She asks the players to get rid of them, harmlessly, if they can. The PCs will go to the camp and realize that the Vistani aren't necessarily evil, and there is some misunderstanding. The Vistani are having a party and invite the PCs to a bonfire story time. This is a great hook because we learn a little bit more about Strahd. The Vistani elder Stanimir tells the story of the prince who was once hurt in battle 
and happened upon the Vistani. They nursed him back to health and helped protect him against his enemies when they came looking. The prince was so thankful, he declared owing them a life debt and invited them to his home country. They would be able to come and go as they pleased as his trusted allies. However, through this tale that Stanmere tells via a magical fire, we learn that this great prince has turned dark and evil due to a curse. The Vistani ask the heroes to help end the cursed Dark Lord and wish to take the PCs to their leader, Madame Ava. If they follow, the PCs will be swallowed into the mists. The PCs will eventually learn that the Dark Lord is Strahd himself. Now, as a side note, this is where you can choose how to roleplay the Vistani. Many people play them as greedy, unhelpful, selfish peoples, yet there can be great success in roleplaying them as people who genuinely care for Strahd and want him and the land healed. This is also a great hook because it gives you a little bit more info and backstory on Strahd. The third adventure hook is the one that I like the least personally. It's the hook you use if you're running an Adventurer's League version of Curse of Strahd, where all the factions give the PCs a task to take out a group of werewolves attacking a nearby village. Each faction gives the PC something beneficial, but only the Order of the Gauntlet, Emerald Enclave, and Harpers give you something physical right away. The rest is just a type of prestige. The benefits are helpful in the early game and have some positives in helping the PC survive the Adventurer's League mandatory tacked-on Death House adventure, but we'll hear more of that in another video. My suggestion is use this if you want to give the player a better fighting chance, but if you truly want helpless heroes, skip most of this and just use the other adventure hooks. The final vanilla adventure hook is my second favorite. It also sets the mood very well and could be a great way to trick your players into Barovia and catch them off guard. The adventure hook is Creeping Fog, and here's a small box text quote. The woods are quiet this night, and the air grows chill. Your fire sputters as a low mist gathers around the edges of your camp, growing closer as the night wears on. I'm not necessarily a fan of tricking the players, Yet this is a great way to throw them a curveball. Have them do normal, regular, low-level adventure quests until about level 3 so they get comfortable, and then the mists come in one night and swallow them whole into Barovia. We've already discussed how Barovia is a scary place, but the book actually gives you some great advice to help keep the mood. You can go as far as you'd like with this, making it more mature or more young player friendly. Published modules in 5th edition do a relatively okay job helping the DM get the point across of what the PCs are experiencing, yet Curse of Straw dedicates a few pages throughout the book on how to actually do this well, and it's not just a sidebar. The book gives advice, and it has a H.P. Lovecraft feel, where we're not necessarily afraid of the dark and the shadows, but what might lie within them. The book highly advises being ambiguous, yet descriptive about what the PCs know. Is that a werewolf causing the rustles in the leaves, or just the wind? The book suggests being descriptive enough to really put the players on edge describing the order that precedes a monster, but also using that same sense to throw the players off. You may smell what usually indicates a dire wolf pack, so you best be on your guard. Yet, you find the dire wolf pack mutilated. What is out in these woods that can do this to a pack of wolves the size of small ponies? That is where some of the fear comes from. Matt and I discuss in our Homebrew in Your Modules video about random encounters, and Curse of Strahd delivers a decent amount and it's not just fighting. One of the issues Matt and I have with some of the published adventures is the odd random encounter placement and choices used for the encounters. Curse of Strahd encounters are focused. Even though they are called random, they're all encounters that thematically fit such a horrid place. A pack of bloodthirsty wolves or zombies is much more thematic here than it is in other adventures, and these aren't just XP farms. 
but encounters that as a DM I actually suggest running from sometimes. This isn't a random encounter table to help the PCs level up, but more to frighten them and help cement the feeling that they are not safe, even at higher levels. Curse of Strahd also does an amazing job cementing the idea that death is a terrifying prospect in Barovia. Souls being trapped in this land make the idea of dying and resurrection terrifying. And the normal reset button that D&D uses, it's not something that's viable. Being resurrected in Barovia is not just the PC coming back. It's the PC coming back with a haunted trauma that they'll never be able to shake. Out of the box, it gives you the indefinite madness rules that you can find in the Dungeon Master's Guide, but you can homebrew a more elaborate penalty. As a Call of Cthulhu RPG enthusiast, this makes Curse of Strahd that much better, where mental anguish is just as scary as the physical pain you get by being bitten by a zombie. The book has more details on running the game, but I also highly suggest watching our How to Run a Horror Game video or listen to our Halloween gaming podcast to help you get the mood just right. One of the greatest draws to Curse of Strahd is a game feature that was introduced in I-6 Ravenloft and is called The Fortunes of Ravenloft. At some point, the PCs will meet Madame Eva, a Vistani fortune teller who helps the PCs learn how they will defeat Strahd. Similar in essence to a tarot card reading, the unique roleplay experiences that this feature gives is very interesting. It helps the PCs find the magic items and allies needed to help the PCs successfully destroy Strahd for good. The book gives you options on how to do the card reading, either with a deck of regular playing cards, using the printouts that you can find online, or buying an actual Taraka deck. Going around and having the PCs interact with Madame Eva as she draws a card for them helps really set the ambiance for the game and this is done relatively early on. Why this is such an immersive and amazing experience to have in Curse of Strahd is that it gives the game some replayability, something that most modules are lacking. I've run Curse of Strahd six times and played it twice, with zero overlap between any of them. Drawing the cards gives a sort of randomness to where you'll have to explore to find the magic items needed. It also opens up new roleplay opportunities with NPCs that may have just been side characters, but now are more important if they are your ally or your enemy. I understand that you may explore these areas normally, however the experience of a locale will be different and NPC reaction will also differ if there is something important to the fortunes in the area. It's just different enough to where I can say that each time you play will be unique enough to make the game feel a little bit different and how you beat Strahd a little bit different each time. Now that you've gotten your unique fortune reading and you've learned of powerful magic items and allies that can help you, Stay tuned for the next video where we discuss the deeply written NPCs and the items that you will need to survive your prison in Barovia.